Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about a new discovery coming from something that we actually all have at home, glue. So let's talk about glue. Let's find out what the scientists recently found and how it might improve our lives in the future. And glue is of course one of the first tools we all get to use even in the kindergarten. Although personally, I wasn't really good at it. As a matter of fact, I always get confused with what glue to use with what surfaces. For example, as you might know, super glue doesn't actually super glue everything. I discovered this the hard way when I tried to super glue certain things I broke around the house and it just didn't work. Well, that's of course because super glue was invented to super glue us, to super glue humans. The original invention was for war purposes to essentially help soldiers stitch together certain body parts such as an exposed wound from a shrapnel from a bullet or something, meant specifically to stop the bleeding so that the soldier can then be treated somewhere in the hospital. But like so many other tools we use in our civilization today, glue has a pretty rich history. As a matter of fact, glue probably has one of the richest histories of all. I could probably write a book about it, but I just, I guess, don't have time for it. So I'm going to have to settle for a two minute summary. We know, for example, that glue was even used by the Neanderthals as far back as 200,000 years ago. Specifically, it was discovered that certain stone tools attached to wooden handles were actually glued together using bark from birch trees. And so officially, this is the first ever use of glue-like substance in the history of humanity or in the history of hominids. Because despite the fact that many of us have various Neanderthal genes in us, we're still a slightly different species. And generally, most of the human cultures around the planet at some point used some sort of a tree bark from some kind of a tree, depending on the region where they were living, to create all sorts of different glue-like substances to bind things together. And binding things together is essentially how we started to produce all sorts of tools, everything from hunting to gathering to, of course, eventually agriculture and building structures and so on. We also know that ancient Greeks and ancient Romans figured out how to make glue out of animal parts and essentially animal glue for the most part began during those times as well. Here's what it possibly looked like and a lot of this was either made from fish or from certain animals such as horses, specifically horse teeth, which is something that has been used for thousands and thousands of years. And so the use of glue became essential for many different cultures. As a matter of fact, one of the successes of the Mongol Empire came from the fact that they found a way to glue together different parts to create a compound bow that was much more powerful and much more successful than similar bows in other cultures. They had much longer range, they had a lot more power, and were usually constructed using lemon wood and bullhorn glued together using some sort of an adhesive, possibly also made from horses as well. Because horses even today form a very important part of the Mongolian culture. But in modern Europe, glue only started to be used around 1500s for mostly decorative purposes, specifically to make furniture. By 1700s, it started to appear in a lot of different industries, started to be used in many different constructions. But it was really not until 1920s when the glue really kind of exploded. And most of this happened because of the First World War and later the Second World War. The war industry required a lot of different resins, a lot of different plastics, and the way to bind them together. And because of this, so many different techniques and so many different glues started to be invented in pretty much most countries in Europe and of course in the United States. But the majority of glue today and the majority of new technologies mostly appeared in the last few decades. So in that sense, the advances in gluing technology are more or less recent. But even today, for the most part, all of the glues can be divided into two different types. They are either glues that harden with time by basically evaporating some kind of a liquid on the inside, which is of course how superglue functions as well, with the other type being the type of a glue that usually requires some sort of a hardening technique, such as the UV light, which is what you see right here, this is something that you can usually find in a dentist office, or some other environmental effect like heat, different types of light or possibly even moisture in order to essentially harden the material to then bind things together. But now for the first time ever the scientists from Singapore may have actually discovered another really interesting technique on how we can bind things together much cheaper, much easier and also with a lot less energy used. And they call this magneto curing process. But it's not truly based on magnets, it's actually not using the magnetic effects. In other words, it's not really just stitching things together using the magnetic field. It is, however, using the magnetic properties to essentially change the material, making it adhesive or making it glue-like. 
which is why they refer to this process as magneto curing. You need a magnet to cure or to glue these objects together. And as always, the study and all of the other relevant links are in the description below. But in a nutshell, this is actually how all of this works. This material uses a combination of an adhesive that usually requires heat to essentially bind things together and a large amount of magnetic nanoparticles made from manganese, zinc and iron. And these magnetic nanoparticles are able to warm up or to heat up the adhesive when a certain amount of magnetic field is applied to them. And so in this case, by first, for example, spraying some kind of a material with the magnetic particles and also with the adhesive, and then using the magnetic field to warm this up, it then starts acting like a typical heat-activated adhesive. And so in this particular case, instead of using a lot of heat, or basically instead of putting the object you're trying to glue into some sort of industrial oven, here, by just applying a little bit of magnetic field, the magnetic nanoparticles warm up the adhesive and make things stick together. And according to the scientists, it actually requires about 120 times less energy than it would require otherwise, and at the same time, the strength of the adhesive is just as strong as any other adhesive. And moreover, there is also a lot more control over the amount of adhesiveness and essentially when you want it to be activated. So certain adhesives might actually require certain temperatures, and in some cases you may want to actually turn off the adhesiveness of something. And because we can control the magnetic field very precisely, this allows for an extremely precise way of gluing things together without damaging any other parts. So for example, we know that certain materials, like certain metals, will have something known as the Curie point. This is the point, the temperature point, when the metals lose their magnetic properties. And that means that when certain temperatures are reached, the magnetic glue will actually stop heating up and will always have this constant temperature. This is something that's very difficult to control in conventional ovens. And in this particular case, they actually use the example of shoe industry that does use these ovens a lot and normally wastes a lot of energy and a lot of heat essentially gluing shoes together. And by using the magnetic particles, it would save them a lot of money and a lot of energy. Apparently, the process itself takes only about 5 minutes and at the same time reaches extremely high adhesive values even after those 5 minutes. That's something that a typical glue is usually not able to do. And this type of precision would be absolutely essential for other industries as well, such as in electronics, such as in medicine, and possibly a lot of other industries that require extremely precise heating, but also very, very strong glues. But naturally, because this is a completely new invention, there is obviously no one using this yet, and currently the scientists are actually just trying to find partners to help them develop this into something more useful, something outside of just a theoretical paper. Either way, the discovery and the research is quite interesting and definitely something that might create a completely new way for us to bind things together. But I guess for now, that's really all I wanted to mention. It's a fascinating discovery, definitely something exciting, but until someone makes something useful out of this, it might not really get us anywhere just yet. So on that note, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon, or maybe support this channel by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.